egg sandwiches, specifically Hong Kong style egg sandwiches. So these are egg sandwiches that we call dan ji from Hong Kong style diners called cha cha tang. And I have pretty vivid memories of eating these egg sandwiches um, because they're quite special. The eggs themselves are ridiculously fluffy. They're really layered, they're custardy, and Hong Kong style scrambled eggs have a couple of little twists in them that really make them, uh, I think, special and not like most egg sandwiches that we normally get in the United States. We are going to be doing a couple of variations on this egg sandwich, but first and foremost, we'll start with the basic Hong Kong style scrambled egg recipe. This is a recipe I've worked on for a little while. I do like it like this a lot with the additions. So eggs first, freshest possible eggs. We're looking for silky, we're looking for fluffy, we're looking for emulsified and incorporated. Key ingredient, evaporated milk. Evaporated milk or even any other type of milk is going to introduce a little bit of fat in there that's gonna give it that silkier texture. We're also going to be adding a little bit of water to our cornstarch or our potato starch to make a slurry. And this is the emulsifier. This is the same type of slurry we use to thicken sauces in a lot of Cantonese cooking. And when we add this to the egg, it's gonna make sure that all of that oil and all of that water inside the yolk and the egg whites and the evaporated milk and the oil and all these other things that we add to it, it's gonna make sure that all of it comes together and holds together. One of the biggest problems with scrambled eggs often is after you make a really delicious fluffy scra scrambled egg, it loses water after it sits for a little while. This prevents that from happening. This technique sometimes is also known as wang bo chao dan, so a wang po style um, slippery egg or a hua dan, uh, a wa dan, a, slick, a silky egg. And this is the type of thing that we use for banquet cooking as well. A little bit of oil to give it a little bit more fat and a little bit more slipperiness. The seasoning is salt and a pinch of white pepper for balance. White pepper is slightly fermented, so it just gives it a little bit of that kick. And Hong Kong people tend to prefer white pepper to black pepper anyway. We're gonna mix this all together really well because the name of the game is emulsification. And what you're looking for is you want to get rid of as many of these like streaks of egg whites as possible. Okay, how's this? Cool. So usually in cha things, you're gonna cook this on a griddle that has a basically nonstick seasoning on top. You want to use a nonstick pan or a wok for this. Anything that has a large surface area that is in contact with your heating element. We're going to cook this egg. It's gonna to come together in like 10 seconds. We're gonna cook this egg and then we're gonna return it back to the bowl, toast the bread, and then plate the eggs on top of the bowl with a, with a spoon, which is basically how cha cha things actually do it when they're doing large orders. Now, pan needs to be hot. We're aiming for layers of custardy egg. And in order to create those layers, there's gonna be a solid sheet of egg that's gonna form when it comes in contact with a hot pan. And then we're gonna push it around with a spatula with these decisive pushes to create more layers and fold it over that way. So pan is starting to smoke. So that's when you know it's hot enough. We're gonna give it a little bit of oil. Actually not a tiny bit, but not quite generous. Good amount of oil. And then we're gonna move it around and we're gonna wait for these ripples. You see those ripples in the middle? That's when you know your oil is ready to go. At this moment in time, what's gonna happen is we're gonna wait for that to smoke and then we're gonna turn it off. Eggs are gonna go in and then I'm gonna push it around. Almost immediately, start pushing it around. All I'm doing is like moving it, moving it. And every time I leave a streak, more egg layers form. Okay. We're just using the residual heat because my stove isn't even on. You see that, how custardy it is and how emulsified it is? Barely picking up any color at all. Right at the end when I have the shape I want, I'm just gonna let it sit and let it all settle. All the water and oil is gonna settle and then the whole thing's gonna come off. That's a Hong Kong scrambled egg, straight into the bowl. I think this is the best scrambled egg in the world. Now that the egg is done, we need to toast our milk bread and build the basic Hong Kong egg sandwich. Let's talk about bread real quick. 
This is milk bread. That's a preferred type of bread for me. Anything that's nice and fluffy and doesn't have too much stuff in it. It's called milk bread because it has milk inside. The milk in the bread makes it a little bit more luscious, a little bit more fluffy. Almost the way brioche is. We like to take the crust off because this egg is so fluffy, you really don't want anything to get in the way of you, your palate, and the silkiness of the egg. The other thing about this bread is my dad and most, I want to say most Hong Kong people tend to prefer their scrambled egg sandwiches untoasted because of the fluffiness of that egg. But I do love that flavor of toasted bread. So what I like to do at home, and this is not standard practice, is to toast the inside of the bread to give it that flavor, but not the outside. And so that way when you serve it, it's the fluffy untoasted white on the outside, and then you get a little bit of that caramelization in the toast uh, in the inside layer. So butter, and then we're gonna toast bread like every other, like, like, like how people toast bread. <laughs> Mop it around, soak up some of that butter flavor. I'm doing it in a cast iron pan because toast is a little bit better when it's toasted on a griddle. It seems to me to be a little bit more even. Toasty flavor in the middle, okay. That's good, that's one. Ooh, gorgeous, that's the second. I think the shape of the egg kind of fits in here. So this whole guy is gonna come out. Okay. There's that gorgeous, luscious egg. Dude. Okay, it's already seasoned so we don't have to mess with it too much. And the top is going to go on. Press it down a little. Like all egg sandwiches, you need it to adhere. The shape is important here. Fix the sides because we're being fussy about the egg in the first place. Might as well get everything tight. Compress it a little bit, right? Try to get the edges lined up. And then just straight in the middle, super gentle. Again, untoasted bread, so the bread knife is essential. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. See those layers? So delightful. That's what I'm talking about. There. Shoot. Basic egg sandwich. Toasted on the inside, untoasted on the outside, super fluffy. Not a lot of color on the egg, but a lot of volume. Good emulsification. You don't see too much sort of like striation of like egg white and egg yolk and stuff. But this is pretty much ideal Hong Kong style egg sandwich. Oh, that looks so good, dude. Here's a classic Hong Kong style egg sandwich. We're gonna make a couple of variations utilizing a couple of delicious salty staples of the Hong Kong diner. You know what I like to do in Food 52 videos? Embed other recipes that barely have anything to do with a primary recipe and insert an entirely new technique that is just supplemental content to the primary source of content. Point is, we're doing a whole stir-fried satay beef recipe secretly hidden within an egg sandwich recipe. I bet you didn't see that coming. So, this is satay beef. Satay is a funny little thing. Satay beef is a Southeast Asian dish, obviously. Um, primarily, I want to say that most of this influence comes from Indonesia, but in and of itself, the ideas of uh, peanutiness and some shrimp paste could come from other parts of Southeast Asia as well. Satay in Hong Kong, however, has taken on its own flavor, and it really is kind of a peanutty sha cha sauce. It's built off of a, I suppose, confusion might be one way to put it, but a confluence of Southeast Asian cultures and Southern Chinese cultures. Basically, it's a marinated stir-fried flank steak. It's a staple in Hong Kong style cha tan tangs or Hong Kong style diners. And so therefore, sometimes it makes its way into the egg sandwich, which is a staple within these Hong Kong diners. So first things first is flank steak. This is beautiful flank steak that we've sliced slightly on a bias against the grain. We're going to squeeze it with a bunch of flavor and let it marinate for at least 30 minutes up to three days. Um, there are a couple of important things in here. First and foremost, from the seasoning perspective, we're going to put some white pepper, chicken powder or MSG as an umami booster, some Shaoxing cooking wine to get rid of some of those gamey, grassy, bloody notes, dark soy sauce for color, light soy sauce for sodium, oil. So oil is gonna help velvet that beef. When we cook it, the oil that's gonna coat and protect the outside is gonna help the texture and get it a little bit slipperier. So it's important here. 
cold oil, even though we're stir frying with hot oil later. For the texture, there is a little bit of water here that we're going to mix into cornstarch or potato starch. That's the layer of protection that's gonna go over the beef. And we're going to add a little bit of baking soda. Baking soda is a traditional meat tenderizer that produces the type of texture that is commonly associated with a lot of Cantonese um, sliced beef dishes, but certainly sacha beef. So all of this liquid of starch, water, baking soda goes in. As you can tell, there's a decent amount of water in here, so we're going to squeeze it all together. The leftover marinade here is going to form the basis of our sauce. Do not be afraid of really handling and tenderizing that meat by squeezing into it. What's gonna happen after you first start squeezing this is you're gonna notice that a lot of that liquid is going to be absorbed into the beef, which is gonna help its texture. After it sits for about 30 minutes, you might notice some of that water leaking out again, which is totally fine. Again, excess liquid becomes sauce. Once all that's together, put this into the fridge, let it marinate for at least 30 minutes, up until three days. Eventually. Two steps here. First and foremost, we're going to be searing off the beef to get a little bit of color in there. So in a wok or any sort of heavy skillet, a little bit of oil, wait for it to smoke, wait for it to shimmer. And don't overcrowd your pan, but beef's going in. I'm gonna go half at a time. Looking for color, so I'm not touching it too much in the beginning. It smells good. Natural sugars in the soy sauce are gonna caramelize, a little bit of sugar in the chicken powder, everything's gonna come together. The sugars in the wine are reducing, starting to see the edges pick up color, and then we're gonna start moving it. Just looking for color here. This marinade is really almost a basic Cantonese beef marinade. With the addition of the peanut and the shrimp paste and the sha cha later, that's gonna make it into a true sha cha beef. Okay, once it's not pink anymore, or red, take it out. Take as much of that as you can. Round two. This is not to fully cook it, this is just to get a little bit of browning and caramelization on the beef. If we did it all at once, or if we did it with the sauce, we wouldn't have that kiss of color. And it's funny, in um, Chinese kitchens, cooking it to this extent isn't called cooking it, we call it duan sheng, so we're cutting short the rawness. So we're just killing the rawness of the meat, but we're not cooking it all the way. That beautiful beef is cooked halfway. As you can tell, the meat is actually quite tender still because of that baking soda and that protection from that starch. In that same pan, we're going to activate some aromatics, a little bit more oil to help get the party started. Shallots. Shallots go in first because garlic tends to burn, but garlic chopped is gonna go in next. And this is a little bit spicy for the chilies, just one. Not for an immense amount of heat, but for a, a small pot. Start to get everything to soften. Cook a little bit of that aggression out of the chilies. Once it starts to pick up a bit of color, shrimp paste. This is technically, this is a type of shrimp paste that I like to use. This is Thai shrimp paste. It's almost conserved in soybean oil, bright red. And sha sha sauce, sometimes translated as Chinese barbecue sauce, even though that's exactly what it isn't. It's made from dried fish, um, salted fish, um, traditionally coconut, but not in the Taiwanese version that you can normally buy nowadays. Saute all of it until the flavors start to come out. Just a couple of seconds, no more than 30 seconds. Water is gonna go in with the peanut butter, and this is the basis of our sauce. The peanut butter is a thickening agent, but also obviously we want some of that nuttiness. And we're gonna bring this all together. Let it simmer for maybe just short of a minute, just to reduce it a little bit and bring all those flavors together. Ooh yeah, Cantonese style satay sauce. A lot of elements of what people know as curry, but evolved or changed for a Cantonese palate. So beef is going back in. Everything comes together. There you go. I'm just gonna let it cook for about a minute or so. 
you want the beef to finish cooking, you want all the flavors to meld. Classically, this satay beef in Hong Kong cha tangs is served over instant noodles. Um, occasionally, you will see it inside of a sandwich, and I actually quite like it in the egg sandwich because the flavors are so intense. So I'm not looking for too much sauce on the bottom of the, of the pan. I want everything to come together. I want the beef to just finish cooking. Call that a day. Satay beef. Let's taste it, actually. So good. So soft, so tender because of that baking soda. It's so classic Hong Kong. So that's a basic satay that we're gonna use inside of one variation of the egg sandwich. After that satay beef, more bonus variations on a very simple recipe. We're gonna make uh, probably my favorite version of the sandwich, which is ham ngao yok danji. So that's corned beef or uh, technically translated from Cantonese salted beef. This is the corned beef that comes in a can, brought over by the British, left in Hong Kong. Like very many other shelf-stable products, a very affordable entryway to European culture, European food culture, so to speak. And therefore, that's the basis of these Hong Kong-style diners that are really a Hong Kong reappropriation of European sort of tea house um, a cafe culture. Really simple, like most other meats, because the cooking of the egg, as you've seen, is so quick. We need to make sure that everything inside of that egg mixture is cooked and already delicious. Corned beef is really well salted, and it's also got a lot of fat in it. So over a medium-high heat, medium-high flame, you're just going to toast the corned beef and let that fat naturally render out. We're just trying to get this crisp and get it delicious. And we're gonna mix this into the egg mixture in a second. The type of corned beef that has little potatoes in it, also quite delectable in this setup. But it's nice because in this recipe, the corned beef seasons the egg. And so you have this like nice, these nice salty caramelized bites with the luscious, silky, velvety egg. By the way, there's a vegan spam out there called Omni Pork that is very good. Surprisingly good. Nice color on there. I'm just going to take it off. That's the corned beef ready for the egg mixture. We have some Spam on hand. Spam is also a very important part of Tatan Tang's and obviously Spam egg sandwiches. So Spam in a nonstick pan, in this case a nonstick wok. Raw, not raw, but dry. There's a bunch of fat in there that's gonna render out slowly. Before, this is a little neat trick for your spam, is as the fat begins to render out, it'll free itself from the pan. But before that, the meat and the pressure that's created from the heat going into the meat is going to help stick it a little bit to the pan, which means that you're gonna get a nicer, even brown color. I bet this is the most amount of concentration anybody in this studio has ever spent searing Spam. <laughs> this is actually okay right now, so... Okay, seared Spam, beautiful salty companion to the eggs. So here are all the variations, the corned beef, the satay, the scallion, and the Spam. And we have the basic egg mixture that we showed earlier set up, ready to go. We're gonna make some variations. For the corned beef and the scallion, the tradition usually is to mix that uh, ingredient into the egg mixture and cook it all together. For other things like ham or spam or even bacon, maybe you would do, or satay beef, we're going to plate that separately on the, in one layer and put the egg over the top before we serve it. Otherwise, the cook of the egg is almost exactly the same. Make sense? Corned beef first, corned beef first. While that's smoking, Corned beef, going to go into the egg. It's quite salty, so we're gonna use about half of it. Since the corned beef is already cooked, the cook on the egg is exactly the same. Just whisk it all together to make sure it's well incorporated. Oil. All around the sides. Wait for it to smoke, wait for it to shimmer, as it's doing now. Turn it off, eggs going to go in. Just let that egg finally set. 
ready to go. Scallion into the egg mixture. Scallion's gonna give it that nice onion-iness. Classic combination, honestly. Chinese cooking, eggs go in. And then these two, I'm just cooking normal. We're gonna assemble the sandwiches. Same as always, toast aside in, untoasted out. Here's a scallion. It actually fits quite nicely. Over the top. <gasps> This thing. <laughs> the bread is so delicate. Corned beef. Dude, look at this. Ridiculous. For this one, let's lay the satay down. Egg. Spam and egg. The most standard one. This one is probably the nicest looking one. Before we sign off, kind of check your work. Look at this guy. Egg, satay. This is the slightly more creative, not super traditional one, but you know. Mmm. <laughs> They're like actually the best egg sandwiches ever. Like I'm not even joking. The way that the bread gives way into the like how eggy it is because all of the fats and the, and the liquid, everything in the egg is so homogenized um, and it's seasoned so delicately with the slightly over salted meat. It's like so balanced. It's like everything you want in an egg sandwich. The recipes are on Food 52. Next time I'm going to be making some wontons. So keep an eye out for that. Mmm.